Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we are going to find the capacitance of a two wire line, which is a single phase line. So, uh, in the last two lectures, we have calculated the electric field potential and the voltage between the two points external to the conductor. So, now these two values will be used to find the capacitance for a two wire line and uh, starting from the assumption of two conductors uh, one is a forward conductor the other one is the return conductor so this is your forward conductor and this is your return conductor forward conductor has a charge q1 and the return conductor has a charge q2 and as a starting point what we are considering is that both the conductors have the same radii which is actually equal to r the distance between the two conductors is at capital d so conductor 1 has charge Q1, conductor 2 has charge Q2. Starting from conductor number 1, so the first assumption that we are going to make is that the conductor 1 is alone in the vicinity. So there is only conductor 1 and it has a charge Q1. We can assume there is another conductor closer to that conductor 1 but it do not have any charge. So for the starting point the assumption is that only Q1 charge is existed over the conductor number 1 and the conductor number 2 don't have any charge. So now if we have to find the voltage V1 2 due to Q1. So there is no charge on Q2 so we will find the voltage potential V1 2 due to Q1. So from the formula we know that this one is actually the high potential point, 2 is the low potential point, Q1 is the charge over the conductor, 2 pi epsilon naught, epsilon naught is the permittivity value, ln d over r and in numerator we have the low potential point distance and denominator we have high potential point distance. right? So V12 one, one is the high potential point, so high potential point is actually the conductor itself. So in the high potential distance point we will have a radius of the conductor. 2 is the low potential point so in numerator we have the low potential distance which is x which is d. So similar can be done for the conductor number 2 which is the return conductor so now we are only considering the charge over this conductor which is equal to q2. The formula will be V21 Q2 is equal to Q2 over 2 pi epsilon naught ln d over r. 2 is the high potential point, 1 is the low potential point, d is the low potential distance, low potential point distance, and r is the high potential point distance. Right? So now 2 is the high potential point because we are only considering the charge over Q2. So if Q2 is the charge over uh, the conductor the return conductor then 2 is the high potential point and its distance from itself is actually its own radius and this point will be the low potential point so the distance from the high potential point and the low potential point is D so this is the formula when we are calculating the voltage V21 right so the main idea uh, was to calculate V12 due to both the charges so first we have calculated the voltage V12 due to Q1 then we have calculated V21 due to Q2 so if we have to add these two voltages we have to either make them V12 both of them or we have to make both of them V21 so we are changing V21 to V12 so if the points are interchanged then this distance distance R and distance D they will be interchanged as well because now one is the high potential point and 2 is the low potential point so these distances from the low potential and high potential point will be changed as well so to calculate the overall potential difference between the two points we have to add both the potential difference due to q1 and due to q2 so these are the values q1 over 2 pi epsilon naught ln d over r plus q2 2 pi epsilon naught ln r over t right so as i have assumed in the starting that uh, Q1 is the forward conductor and Q2 is the return conductor and I'm assuming that there is no current flowing back from the ground as well so all the current is returning from the conductor Q2 so therefore if Q2 is minus Q1 we can say that both Q1 and Q2 are equal 
in magnitude but therefore there is value minus q for q2 right so if i will solve this equation this will be q1 over 2 pi epsilon naught ln d over r plus q2 over 2 pi epsilon naught ln r over d this is equal to q this is equal to minus q so we can take q over 2 pi epsilon naught common ln d over r minus ln r over d so we can take this negative sign in numerator so it will, this will become q2 pi epsilon naught into ln d over r plus ln d over r this will be q over 2 pi epsilon naught ln d over r square right so this is uh, the value of v12 when both the conductors have the same radii and the all the current that is in the forward conductor is also in the return conductor but in all in opposite direction so now if you have to find the capacitance c12 you have to divide q over 1 so the final formula for the capacitance will be pi epsilon naught ln d over r farad per meter. Okay. So this is the line to line capacitance. So this is the capacitance between the two conductors. But normally when we are solving the transmission lines or modeling the transmission line, we usually model it using the inductance capacitance and resistance and as we know that the transmission line is a balanced system so we can use a single line diagram to solve the transmission line or to get the voltages at the end of the transmission line uh, using a single line diagram and in single line diagram we use voltages vn which is line to neutral voltage and then the all the values the capacitance value should also be line to neutral capacitance value but here we have calculated the line to line capacitance so we have to convert this into line to neutral capacitance so for that we will assume that there is a line which is being supplied by a grounded centered tap transformer So in case of grounded center type transformer, the capacitance between the two conductors is CAB, which is line to line capacitance. And if it is a center type transformer, there is a neutral point in the center and the capacitance can be divided into two equal parts. So if it is divided into two equal parts, the voltage between the two phases will also be divided into two equal parts. So this is V by 2 and this is also V by 2. So now the formula for the capacitance will be Q over V. Q is the charge QA over the conductor. For example, on conductor 1, the charge is QA. So divided by voltage, voltage till the neutral point is VA by 2 as it can be seen from this diagram. So the voltage from any conductor till the neutral point, it is the half of the total voltage between the conductors. So this is VAB divided by 2. So QA will cancel out with QA and the final formula will be CAN is equal to 2 pi k over ln d over r. So the line to neutral capacitance will be actually double of the line to nine capacitance. There is one more thing to remember in this formula we have r but in inductance formula we were using r dash which was which was the radius of the fictitious conductor. But in capacitance, we are using the radius of the actual conductor. Why? Because we don't have any electrical field inside the conductor. But in case of inductance, we have magnetic field lines inside the conductor. Therefore, we have to use R dash, which is a fictitious conductor. But in capacitance value, we are using the actual radius of the conductor. Thank you.